Hey guys, today we're out here in the forest for a catch and cook. Now what we're after are these right here. These are longhorn beetle grubs. And they're what's been putting the holes in these trees behind me, what's been killing them. They're not much to look at, but that's some really useful protein right there. So I'm going to show you how to find them, how to cook them, and here in a bit, I'll be eating them. Now one of the best ways to find beetle grubs is to look at the trees that are already dead and down. But take a look at the holes that have been burrowed through this wood. Those are beetle grub holes, and that means at some point in this tree's past, probably what killed it, beetle grubs lived and fed on this tree. Now that doesn't guarantee that there's anything inside of there right now. So what we'll do after we find the holes is check onto the sides, and we're going to look for holes that have waste coming out of them, also sawdust. So check on down there. We found one. All right. Somebody's home. Monster log. They're not too rotten. Have something. There's one. That'll eat. tear these logs apart you want to be careful now, down here in the South Texas we deal with fire ants which can get on you and mess you up real quick and there's a lot of venomous snakes out there now, even though it's cold out right now we came across the coral snake trying to stay warm out on the trail just a while ago. So keep an eye out. There we go. That's what we're looking for. And usually when you find one, you'll find more. Not much, but it's something. Knocked a grub loose, but also found fire ants. Do not want to mess with those things. This is my worm. Well, we haven't found as many grubs as I'd like to, but if we're going to eat them, we might as well do it right. And here in my hand, I've got two chilipatine peppers, and they came off of this plant right back here. These are about like a habanero, and they're going to be one of two ingredients we'll mix together in order to make a dipping sauce for our grubs. The second ingredient for our dipping sauce is going to be prickly pear tuna. This is the fruit off the prickly pear cactus. And you definitely want to use gloves until we have a chance to burn off all those little spines. But very fruity, kind of like a raspberry. Lots of seeds. I'll show you how to skin it. Well, we've had our cooking fire going for a while. It's starting to burn down into some nice coals and some really good cooking heat. Now, I'm going to be showing you how we're going to be cooking these grubs over the fire in just a moment using the split stick, which works out really well. While these things are cooking over that fire, low and slow, we'll be mixing our ingredients together, showing you how to make that dipping sauce. We'll go ahead and cook the two largest first. Get those going over the fire, pretty simple. You just wedge them right on down, it splits the wood. Pretty easy. Let's go ahead and put these over heat, get them started cooking. Here in a bit, when one side's done, we'll flip it over. Now onto the dipping sauce. Before we mess with this tuna right here, that is the prickly pear fruit, we need to go ahead and burn the glockids off of it. And the glockids are those tiny, nasty hairs on there. So sharpen your stick and put it over some flame. 
a little bit of singe. These open flames ought to burn those thorns right off. Nice and toasty, and no more thorns. Go ahead and peel this. It's pretty simple. Take your knife. I'm just going to cut the skin of one side just like that. You also want to cut the ends off. There's one end. There's two. From there, you just peel back the edges. You can't just pop that in your mouth because it's got seeds inside of it. So that's our last step, is pulling out some of these seeds and just getting the good fruit all the way around. Now you can live off these for a while, but uh, you do want some protein every once in a while. And that's where the grubs come in. Go ahead and pull our seeds out. Lots of little seeds. All this left is to mush our fruit up and dice a little bit. Doesn't take much. Make it into kind of a paste. Doesn't take much. It's pretty awesome fruit leather. You have a dehydrator. And we're going to use just one chili patine because I'm a wuss. So we'll crush that with the blade of my knife, just like that. And we'll mix it all together. A little bit of sweet. Probably quite a bit of spicy. Our grubs are nice and brown on one side means it is time to flip it over and cook it on the other. Well, the grubs are just about done, but I'm wondering what this tastes like. So I'm going to go ahead and test it out. See how it did. Mm, sweet. Mm. And then it's hot. This one tastes, uh, this one tastes like plum, so it starts out really sweet, really watery, and then the chili patine hits you in the back of your throat and gives you that nice spice, so I would definitely put that on a chip. Our taste tester just showed up. He saw me eating some of this dipping sauce, and he thought he was missing out. I think... You might be doing better off with just the grubs. Wanna try that? Okay. <laughs> it's not happening. Well, our grubs should be effectively cooked by now. Go ahead and put them over some intense heat. Let them crisp up a little bit. And they'll be ready to eat. Well, I think our grubs are all cooked. Let's go ahead and pull these off the stick. Put the smaller ones on there. It's time to go ahead and try them out. Well, my taste tester's here. That means that it's time to eat what we've cooked. Now, I'm going to claim the large one, and I'm going to be using the dipping sauce. I don't think Huck wants the dipping sauce, but uh, we'll see. Now the only thing that you need to know about these is that the head on them is extremely hard. That's capable of eating through the bark of those trees and it's pretty much to the point where you can't eat it. So uh, I usually bite off the body and hold onto the head and throw that away. So uh, I rub that in some dipping sauce, give it some flavor. This is when you wish you had some Cholula. And enjoy. Very woody. You can definitely, definitely taste the fat. Pure calories though. You ready to try?
Think so? Okay. <laughs> Hug. Here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fine. The sauce? Okay. It's not happening. Huh? More for me. You're lost. Okay. Well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Now, understand insects and grubs, they're not on my top ten. And I dare say they're not on hooks either. But in a survival situation, meat is meat. And I imagine given enough hunger, even the dog would be eating grubs with me. Now, overall, not a bad flavor. Uh, woody, smoky, kind of like a jalapeno popper, especially if you make your own dipping sauce a little spicy. It works out pretty well, and uh, I guarantee I've eaten worse off the Chili's appetizer menu a few times. So it's mostly a mind game when you're eating grubs and things like that. Uh, being said, though, uh, given the opportunity, crawdads, bluegill, uh, really about a million other creatures out here in the forest, I'd rather be eating before resorting to uh, bugs and grubs. So uh, I think it's just personal preference mostly. Guys, again, hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, tell me what you think about it. If you have anything you'd like to see me do, eh, throw it down there. You never know. Like, subscribe, share the heck out of this video, and as always, until next time. This is one of the few large healthy trees left here in the forest. This is what the bark is supposed to look like before the beetles kill it and eat holes all through it. This is what the trees look like after a few years of beetles. You can see some of these holes that they've burrowed through. They're eating this tree from the inside out and it's been dead for a couple years. It's just waiting to fall down. The rest of the forest.